Hey folks, this is uh, Dr. Jacob Crane from Enhanced Physical Therapy. I would like to make this brief video on uh, teaching you how to do some exercises uh, if you're suffering from lower back pain. Um, ideally, when a patient has a lower back pain, they usually have pain in the lower back. It could be unidirectional to one side or it can go to your legs. Now, these three exercises that I'm going to show you is for someone with lower back pain, either the center of the back, maybe to either one of the sides of the lower back. And I'll teach you how to use these exercises. We'll start off first with uh, showing Georgie how to do these exercises. Uh, it's called prone extension or mulligan prone extension. Some people call it uh, lumbar extensions or press ups. Okay, uh, this exercise would be uh, for a patient who's suffering pain with extension of the lumbar spine. So Georgie, I'm gonna have you go ahead and lie face down. So here you are, a patient with low back pain. Pain where you cannot lean backwards. There's some pain there. So you start off with, with prone lying, lying on your belly. Hands close to your chest below your shoulder if possible. If it's difficult for you to do a press up that way, you can move your hands further up. But I prefer your hands right there. So this exercise is actually something like a self-traction where you're, you're distancing your joints and you're helping the disc go back in between that, okay? So for example, you have pain in your lower back and you're unable to extend your spine, make it go back. Now you understand the disc is over here in between the joints. Sometimes there's a positional fault where the bones are not properly aligned and uh, when you perform this exercise, the disc may be going backwards and touching the covering of the spinal cord or pinching a nerve root. So this is the disc, this is the spine, your back over here, and you're unable to go up, it's getting jammed. So if you cannot do it in standing, I want you to go ahead and go onto your belly. So having said that, I'm gonna have Georgie lift up his chest Lift up your ribs and stay right there. I don't want your pelvis to come off the table. Now, if the patient has some pain, let's say central lower back pain, I'm gonna say go up to pain, don't have to go through pain. Stay there for about 10 seconds and then go back down. I want them to repeat about seven to 10 reps. If you cannot do at least five reps, do it three sets of that. Hold down, 10 seconds. Try to keep your pelvis down again and come back down. So stay right there. So that's the first scenario. Patient with central lower back pain, we're going to pain towards, to pain, to the point of pain, not going through it. Now, what if the patient has unilateral pain and when he comes up, go ahead and come up and he has pain going up over here, right there. Oh, I meant go back, go back on your belly, I'm sorry. So if there's a unilateral low pain in the back, I'm gonna use a pillow under that side of pain. So if it's left low back pain, you're gonna put this pillow under the left anterior iliac spine right there and have the patient perform or have do this exercise now. Go ahead, press yourself up and hold it right there. If it's painless, you're gonna repeat this seven to 10 reps, come back down. That's, molly, uh, that's a mulligan prone extension and a modified prone extension with a pillow under the pelvis. Now if your pain is on the right side, put a pillow under that side and do the same exercise. Do it three sets, seven, uh, three sets, 10 seconds, every two hours. Now, let's talk about lumbar flexion. If someone has pain with flexion of the lumbar spine, they can't bend down, they can't pick up anything, I'm gonna have them do Lion exercise, mulligan lion exercise. Some of them call it a prayer stretch, but I'm gonna show you how mulligan has taught this technique. So I'm gonna have you go on all fours. Your hand should be shoulder width apart. Your knees shoulder width apart. I want you to put your hands right there. And your feet are standing behind the camera. Are you able to see this over here? Is it visible, his feet? Barely. Barely, so how about that now? That's better. Okay. So. From behind, I want to make sure his feet are slightly wider than the knee. I want the spine to be neutral. 
I don't want him to be in a lordotic posture or a posterior pelvic, pelvic tilted position, okay? So neutral spine, I'm gonna have him come down. Now, if the patient has pain right there, I'm gonna have you stop it. Stay there, hold it for 10 seconds and go back up. If it's central pain. There are many ways you can treat this. I'm trying to give you exercise that you can do on your own. So if he has pain and is unilateral pain, then I'm gonna have you put a pillow under your knee or move this knee up. So first let's use this, a foam or a pillow under the knee. No, just under one knee. Both knees are at equal height and uh, they're on level with each other is what I meant. And your, and your feet are like that. This is slightly higher. When you come down, you're coming straight in between your legs, right there. Now, if you don't have pain, go all the way through. Stay there for 10 seconds and come back up. Now, before you do this exercise, if you have a total knee or knee, anything with the knee surgeries, you have pain with this in your knees, unfortunately, you cannot do it. If you have a total hip, you cannot do this exercise. But for those who can do it and have no precautions, then you can please go ahead and do this exercise. This is for someone with unilateral pain into this side, that's your left side, you're gonna use a pillow out of the knee. And uh, do that about 10 reps, hold it for 10 seconds. If you cannot do it 10, do at least seven to five reps. And retest, retest means let's take this off and I'm gonna have you go ahead and do the same thing. Now what if you still have pain? You would use the same pillow under your knee. Now, if the pillow does not take away your pain, unilateral pain, whether it be the left side or the right side, in this case, his left side, I would then have his left knee go forward a little bit. There's a second technique. One is with a pillow, one is with just moving the leg forward, slightly forward. Now, there's a tendency when you do this exercise that you would want to uh, tend to lean towards one direction. Try not to and come straight down in between all the bring your butt right in between. Now, this could be the trick that could take away your lower back pain if flexion is limited. Make sure you just don't follow one technique. The, the, the trick is it should be pain free. If you're doing it with a pillow and you have no pain, then stick with a pillow. If you're doing it with a pillow and the pillow causes pain, then try this. If this is a way your pain, if, if, if it does not bring on pain with this technique, then use this technique only. Repeat this three sets, 10 reps. Go ahead, come down. And full flexion would be that. Come back up. All right. The third technique would be for someone with pain going down their hamstrings. And I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and lie, lie on your back. So it could be hamstring pain or lateral thigh pain. So which means is you might have a sciatic nerve pain or you can have an L5 S1 um, nerve pain. Anytime you have pain, lateral thigh, behind the back, more likely this technique is gonna help you. Which means you would also have a positive, put your legs down, Georgi, you could have a positive straight leg test, which is, if you have somebody at home to help you, then have them test you. What they gotta do is simply, you're gonna relax completely, and if I bring your leg up, zero to 30 degrees, sometimes even 50 degrees, you're gonna have pain. And if you have pain that stops right above your knee, that's the key note, above the knee, then this technique is good for you or this exercise, home exercise is good for you. What I would want Georgie to do now is to bend both knees. First off, this exercise is called as mulligan gait technique. And I'm going to describe how to do it on a table and I'll make some modification because most of you don't have a table at home. So Georgie is going to hold his hand on the left side over there. Before I start off, any questions that you want me to answer, it'll be good. So this is it. I'm able to do this on my bed on your bed and I'm going to modify it because you might not have a table, yeah. right? So let me first teach you the technique, mulligan, uh, mulligan gate technique and, uh, and uh, I'll modify it to how you do it on the bed. So feet together, left hand bent right there to hold onto the table if you have a table. This one can stay right there. Now, the indication for this exercise is pain traveling behind to the knee or to the side, not below the knee. What I would want to do is I'm going to have the patient lift both knees up and this, they can do it on your own. You're going to, I'm, uh, the, the, if you do it correctly, you're not going to fall off the bed or the table. 
you're going to keep your feet together and you're going to go down. Now, if you do experience pain, you're going to stop right there, come back down and go down the hill and try to enter the gate that's open. Is there any pain there? You will stop, go back and go maybe a little lower. Sometimes you might have to go a little higher to go through the painless range of motion. So once you figure out where you do not have pain, you're going to go through the gate and you're going to hang your knee together, your feet together off the table. Gonna have them hold in that position for about 10 seconds, come back up and down. When you come back down, you're gonna bring this one leg down at a time and then the other. Okay, I'm gonna have you repeat this three times. That is, go back up. So Imagine you do have pain. I don't want you to bend your leg like that. If you do have pain in your hamstrings, I want you to actually slide this leg up, slide the next one up. George is gonna hold the table next with a bent elbow, pick it up and find that gate that's open for you or the area, the range that you do not have experienced pain. You're gonna then hang and see, if you don't have pain, you're going to go down as far as you can. You might want to even put your hand there. 10 seconds and you bring it back. Put your bad leg first or your affected side first and then your unaffected side. Then lower one, lower the other. You would do three times before you come down to this position. Okay. Uh, while we are there, I want to address what if you don't have a table. If you don't have a table, then we're going to grab two pillows, just like that. Georgie, Georgie, let's, let's uh, imagine this, that Georgie has pain in his right side of the lower back. I'm going to have Georgie roll on to the left side, Georgie. Roll over, completely log roll, bend both knees, swing your legs off the table and push your hands and get up. That's a safe way of getting off the table. And that's the same way he's gonna go back onto it. I'm gonna put this pillow right there, right under his tailbone. And I'm gonna have Georgie go light, put his spine on that pillow. So go back to side line, rotate onto the pillow. All right guys, so we have these two pillows that will eliminate the need for a table. When Georgie hangs off this pillow on his bed, he's going to have a distance between the pillow and the bed that makes it the same effect, that brings about the same effect as you would do it on the table. So go ahead. Would you appreciate that, Senny? Yeah? Okay. What do you, what do you say? You okay with that? So yeah. hold the table there. So if Georgie hangs off these two pillows and he finds that the gate, that open area, he can then hang off those two pillows on his bed. So you have no fear of falling off the table when you're on the bed. So this might be for someone who does not have a table at home. Remember guys, three times, come back up. And once you've done it three times, you want to know, you want to make sure that you can, you can retest this. How do we retest? Some of you can actually just lift your own leg and that should have improved range of motion. For example, you had pain at 30 degrees before you started this exercise. Instantly, after three times, three, three repetitions, you should be able to be, if this technique is, is, uh, is indicated for you, you will see a substantial increase, a substantial increase in range of motion. So that's about 50 degrees. So after again, after two hours, go back and do another three reps. So those are the three quick fixes for your lower back. Now, having said that, Go ahead, uh, Georgie, go back to your good side and sit up for me. There are so many different tricks that we can do to help this lower back pain, um, self, self treat the lower back pain. And, um, and I think I've done a, a, a earlier video where I explained what a self snag is. So I will also teach you what a self snag is. It's gonna be a little bit more detailed and, uh, but I'll try to quickly knock it out. So using your, your, second MCP joint or your, your knuckle or you have the index finger, I would then find out where the lower back pain is. It's a little bit more detailed and you got to understand this. So for imagine you have pain 
with what if you have pain not with flexion extension you have pain with side bending rule of the thumb is from l4 and l5 side bending range of motion is most affected in most population because these are movements that we don't tend to do so they get a little bit more uh, the joint gets more stiff and more uh, prone to injuries when we twist and turn so if you know where l4 l5 is it's very easy to do this trick if not i can show you how to get by the trick so this is your anterior superior iliac spine which is where your belt is okay why don't you come come this way georgie i'm going to show you how to do this too so turn around and so this is your anterior superior iliac spine if i move my hand from this from this bone over here if you see and and there's a space over at the back called as a posterior superior iliac spine which is the dimples in your lower back right above the dimple area stand up georgie Turn around, face that side. So, if that was the anterior superior iliac spine, you come back over here, you find the dimples. From the dimple, the first big bone that you actually is a small bone that you find as L5, and that's L4. Between those L4 and L5 is usually the regions of most common lower back pains. Pains that go from the hamstrings could be from L4, from from the nerve that's going kind of from the L4 is what I meant. L4 and L5 could be the pain that's going traveling to the lateral side of the leg. Now, if you have pain with lateral flexion of the lumbar spine, what I would recommend you to do is to first use this fist underneath the L4 lumbar vertebrae that's there. So you'll palpate L5 like I showed you, anterior superior iliac spine, fifth vertebrae, go to the fourth vertebrae. The one above five is four. So five and four, use your knuckle right there. So this is the hand that palpates lumbar's fifth vertebrae. This is the lift arm. Now the facets over here at a 90 degree angle. So the lift will be at that angle, 90. So if you have unilateral pain going to one of the sides, I would go to the, if the pain is at the lumbar fourth vertebrae, I'm gonna go to the transverse process over here. Guys, this could be a little complicated, but if you can get through this, you're gonna be okay. So pain at L5, you lift L4. For central low back pain, grab the L4 spinous process with your knuckle, lift it up, and you can go into whichever direction of pain. There should be zero pain there. If this is, if this is a technique that's gonna work for you, you should have zero pain. It's a pain-free self-snag. Snags, what snag means is sustained natural artificial glide. So you're using this knuckle to lift the lumbar spine and you're gonna side bend to the right if you have pain with right side bend. You do that about five reps on the first day in the absence of pain. Palpation is, is the most difficult part with this, with this technique and for most of you. And you can, you can be very, very confident if the pain with the, associated with the movement is right side bending and if you lock under the L4 spinous process and you lift it, at a 90 degree angle with this hand. This is a lifting hand. You lift that and you bend, that should be zero pain. Now, if you do have pain with that range of motion, you're probably, the angle is slightly off. Give me a call, I'll walk you through it, okay? Um, there are various other techniques that I would use and I'll have to make another video for that. But I thought I should go into also showing you proper posture in sitting and proper, proper po posture and picking up anything from the floor. This would help you in preventing further lower back pains, helping you to get, get back to, uh, to uh, pre-injury status really quick, okay? So usually lower back pain, we get a lot of uh, patients walking in because of poor posture, pro bio, uh, improper biomechanics uh, during lifting and picking up objects from the floor, etc. So let me address that. Um, let's grab a chair, here you go. So if you have, this time, if you're going to be sitting a lot, I want to first focus on posture and sitting. Go ahead and have a seat. Folks, understand this, that sitting is when the spine is maximally loaded. Before I start off, I say, if you're going to be sitting and if you have lower back pain, try to sit no more than 30 minutes. Try to get up and try to relieve your lower back pain. You can go, go ahead and lie down on your low, lower back with pillows under your knee. Well, I, my... my uh, 
ideal modality for pain is ice. Ice for 20 minutes for pain. If it's just joint stiffness, you can use a hot pack for 10 minutes. I'll do it. If severe pain, I'll do ice for every, every two hours. Why ice? Because ice, you know, ice would actually numb your pain, numb your pain and left alone for long uh, periods, like 20 minutes, it's going to increase vasodilation, increase circulation. So you're going to numb your pain, decrease inflammation. Ice is the way to go. The only time I would not use an ice is if you have uh, certain underlying uh, uh, conditions like sickle cell or Raynaud's disease where you have an allergic reaction to ice. If your fingers turn blue, please do not use an ice pack. If you have sickle cells, do not use an ice pack. Okay. Um, other ways for arthritis, for low back pain, ice is the way to go. And um, again, coming back to sitting technique, your feet have to be on the floor when you sit. Go ahead and lower the chair for me. All right. And I said, sitting is uh, when the spine is maximally loaded, which means there's more intradiscal pressure when you sit down. Standing is uh, number two and lying down is number three. That means least is lying down. Uh, so coming back to sitting, you have to make sure that you sit with your hips higher than the knee. I'm talking about the hips. Everybody says things about the pelvis. That's the pelvis. That's the hip bone. The hip bone has to be higher than the knee. Also, posture when you're sitting, sit up nice and tall. If you can, move back all the way. Now, if the knees get lower than the chair, then you're going to be sitting on the sacrum. When you sit, when you sit, folks, you want to be sitting on the sit bone. Sit bones. That's part of the pelvis. That's the that's a hip bone. You want to be sitting on the sit bone. If your if your if your hips are lower, you're going to tend to sit on the sacrum, and it's called sacral sitting. What this does is going to put your pelvis into a posterior tilted position and increase the intradiscal pressure, increase the intradiscal pressure, disc going back and pressing the nerve pressure. So you want to be able to sit on the sit bones, hips higher than the knee. Let's also talk about desk cues while we are here. We found this desk online and uh, it works really great. So go ahead and adjust this table for me. I Georgie don't. actually put this table up for me so he knows how to work this best. I, don't I want you to lower the table down. There you go, that's enough. Go ahead, sit down. When you use a table, you don't want to use it at this side. You want to bring up the table a little bit more, a little higher, a little bit more. Keep going, right there, good. So how do I know that? Elbows at that height, okay? When you're using a computer, you want to make sure your elbows are by your side, somewhere around there, and your and your your computer is right there in front of you. You're gonna be looking at the computer at this distance. That's where your computer should be. And your elbows should not be over here. If you're here, leaning forward, forward head posture, all this is gonna cause you neck pain, increase lower back pain. It's best if you can bring that table back there. Is your feet on the floor? Now on the floor, that's a great posture right there. And your computer can be somewhere here. Is that 20 inches away? Roughly. Roughly? Okay, that's good then, all right? And um, that's a perfect position for a computer to be at, okay? But that's how you'll decrease um, the irritation in your lower back. All right, having said that, what if you have to sit and watch a TV, you know? Um, let's talk about that. So if you're gonna be sitting for long periods of time, say going on a uh, plane ride, traveling for a couple of hours, uh, recline sitting is good as long as you understand this concept. Maintain the 90, 90 degree pos position on your back backrest, okay? And one more thing folks, your seat should not be too deep. If you see that you're sitting on a chair where the chair ex extends till the back of your knee, that's no good. Your chair should stop around this area, okay? If you're sitting for a prolonged period, then you're going to be sitting with a slight uh, tilt back feature. This chair does not have a tilt back feature. There are some chairs where you can actually tilt the whole chair at this angle slightly backwards. So once you get the back tilted that way, not just reclining. Reclining is actually bad for you, but if you tilt the bottom and the top of the seat back in a 90 degree angle, it's going to be okay. Here you would see that the knees are going to be higher, but that position is ideal for low back for prolonged sitting. Make sure your feet is actually supported at that time, okay? Did that, was that clear? 
You, you, it makes sense to you? Yeah, sure. Right. One, one question. Sure. If I'm sitting in a car while I'm driving. Those seats are slightly larger, and they come to the back of my leg. Yes. So how would I adjust? And now, are, the, are those seats able to go up and down? Yes. Okay. And does it have a recline feature? Yes. Okay, cool. So if the seats are too deep or if it extends too far back, then the only thing you would have to do is you have to add a pillow over here that would push you forward. Does it answer your question? Yes. Okay. Now, if you don't have a tilt back feature, it puts you in a tough situation. You could recline a little bit back that way, but the best scenario would your would be if you can get the seat to tilt back at that 90 degree angle. Anything else that you can think about? No? All right, folks, if you have any other questions, please feel free to call me. Um, and uh, the, there are so many different ways to correct your lower back. If you have pain going down your knee, traveling below your leg, I would have to work on your lumbar, uh, on your spine, and that's called as uh, spinal mobilization with leg movements. Uh, all of the mulligans techniques are done in a functional setting. So if you have pain with sitting, I correct the pain in sitting. If you have pain, if you have low back pain or squatting, then I have a trick where I, I, I would actually, a technique, it's not a trick, it sounds like a trick, uh, but a technique that would be used with a belt and I would correct that, please stand up for me. I would correct that technique like so. So let's imagine Georgie has pain with forward bending. And uh, let's imagine that Georgie has pain, unilateral pain. So this is a mulligan belt that stabilizes somebody's pelvis. When I have to snag or sustain natural artificial glide of the lumbar spine. So in case where Georgie has pain with forward flexion, let's imagine that he has pain with forward flexion and the pain is on his left lumbar fifth vertebrae or the fourth vertebrae let's go to the fifth vertebrae i would then put my hand on the spinous process of the fifth vertebrae and i i'm talking about unilateral pain to the left i would first go to the left transverse process of the fifth vertebrae with my thumb in this case the fifth vertebrae is the only vertebrae that you will not be able to use a belt to self snag we'll talk about it in another video in this case of treatment, I'm going to use my thumb onto the transverse process of his fifth lumbar vertebrae, snag it at a 90 degree angle because the facets of the lumbar spine are the 90 degree angle. I lift it up and I'm going to have Georgie bend down, slightly bend your knees as far as you can go and come back up. Sustain the glide and repeat that five repetitions. Come back up. Okay. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to palpate L4, an inch and a half away from the spinous process is a, is a transverse process of the lumbar fifth vertebrae. I'm going to use my left thumb to, to palpate and my right thumb to reinforce. I'm going to snag this. As a clinician, this video will be good for you. You're going to snag this vertebrae and that shows you that I didn't click the belt in place. Let's load the belt back in place. Go back to the fifth, fourth, left transverse. And if I were to snag it, I would snag it properly without the t-shirt on, on the skin itself. I'll, I'll take up the skin slack, snag it at about 90 degree angle. My right elbow is at below, so I can lift this joint up towards the head, towards his head. That's the angle which you want to lift. I'm going to have him flex forward. And hold the snag, come back up, hence it's called sustain, and back up to neutral. So, you could appreciate that, that is a functional correction of the lumbar spine. It's done in the absence of pain. I do not know of a single uh, treatment tool that is available uh, as we speak that can correct a joint in the absence of pain and during a function that is limited. So it's a pain-free movement with mobilization. Mobilization with movement. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, again, feel free to call me. Our number here is 516-833-5880. Enhanced Physical Therapy, and we're located in Mineola. Thank you for watching.